Hello, I'm Keith Wilson with the Schmidt Music Trombone Shop, back with another instrument review for you. And today I've got an instrument that we have been excitedly waiting for for literally years, specifically the Greenho GC2-Y. So, Greenho, of course, we've talked about these instruments in the past. It's heritage from Gary Greenho and his team and how Schilke has continued on the tradition of the, the Greenho large board tenors and bass trombones and the reception that they have gotten a few years ago, literally about three years ago, they started hinting at developing a small bore tenor trombone. And right away we put in our order, but the development process took a while but we've finally been able to put hands on our first GC2-Y in the shop. You may have seen a brief review I did of the new GC2 models at the Midwest Clinic 2021, but again, we've got our own in the shop here, so I'm very excited to share this experience with you. So I'm gonna take a play on it. We're gonna talk about it afterward. I'm gonna play all of this today on my trusty Bach 7C. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
One of the things I've really enjoyed about the trombone world in general the last two or three years is that we've had any number of manufacturers who have been doing some really, really great, interesting work in terms of their development of new models, whether it is you know, taking your know, brand new concepts and putting them together or looking back at older models and figuring out, okay, how did these trombones play the way that they did? How can we maybe not even replicate that, but how can we synthesize that into what we're doing to create a brand new option? And I think this model certainly falls into the latter. So, the GC2 has been a model, like I said, that Greenhoe has been working on for a number of years. Um, they've worked on this with the great, you know, LA recording, you know, trombonist, trombonist extraordinaire Alex Isles. Um, they did consulting with Gary Greenhoe and others on this as well to come up with this design, really trying to keep in mind the you know, so many of the, the, the sonic and construction innovations that Gary Greenhoe and his team developed and that Schilke have continued, but putting it into a little bit different format. So the GC2 is named the GC2 because it is really inspired by the classic con 4H and 6H of the 40s, 50s, 60s. Um, which by itself I think is really, really interesting because we certainly have, um, you know, some other makers who have taken that as somewhat of an inspiration, but I don't know that I've really seen anybody really look to that as the, the foundation for their development. And that's very exciting for some reasons that I will talk about here. So the GC2-Y features an eight inch, uh, two-piece lightweight bell, um, unsoldered rim, which gives it a little bit different resonance to it. Um, it has a 500 bore hand slide, um, nickel silver outer tubes with yellow brass crook, uh, comes with two interchangeable lead pipes, two different lengths. Um, I played all of today on the shorter, the number two of the lead pipes. And again, I'll talk about that experience here. And of course it has all of the, the green hole hand working and time and care, all of the work that takes you know, orders from Greenhoe a year to a year and a half to come to fruition because of all the work that is going into them. So what is it that's really exciting about using those great con trombones, the 4Hs, 6Hs, and some of the others as the basis? For me, it's because those instruments have a really unique quality. You know, for me, when I think about the kind of the two ends of the small bore trombone spectrum, it really starts off with more of like a con approach and more of a king approach. Um, you know, the king has been, of course, very popular for a very long time for really, really great reasons. There's a there's a certain you know openness to the sound. There's there's a a brilliance that's controlled, but there is a ring to the sound, right? And you get some of that snap and some of that edge. And on the other hand, I've always thought that the cons had a little bit different weight to the sound. They're not heavy sounding necessarily, but they certainly had a, a different kind of warmth core to the sound. To me, the you know the outside of sound was just ever so slightly more rounded. Not even like in a soft diffuse way there, but just a little bit different character to it. And in a lot of development that we've seen, I think we have seen the king used more as an inspiration with the con coming in place there, but not as often. And so again, I think this bring, this instrument brings a different character to the table. So what does that mean for the player? What did I experience? Well, right off the bat, I felt like it, again, had a really beautiful stability to the sound. There is, there's a, a ring to it. I wouldn't certainly say, I wouldn't even call it necessarily a warm sound. Um, I mean, I think it does have a little bit different character than like a classic King sound. To me, it's more about the, the denseness, the richness of the sound. There's a lot of stuff happening in the sound, but it still is maintaining a real clarity to the sound as well. There's a, there's just kind of a mass to it. Um, I felt like it was a fairly, you know, fairly decent size sound. I wouldn't say wide, but I wouldn't say narrow and focused, kind of right in between. But again, when I was going through and playing, I just felt like it projected really easily. And I felt like I got a lot of feedback as well on the player side, which can be really important as well. Um, you know, certainly I tried to go through and demonstrate what's happening in the lower register, upper register. I thought the upper register sits beautifully up there. You know, I had not as easy a time getting up to the 11th, 12th partial as I've had, frankly, with, a, you know, any of the really great high-end, you know, small bar tenors that we have had in the shop. Um, and again, I really appreciated, you know, a little bit of the sonic flexibility with it. I felt like it stayed stable all the way through, but I did really like that when I pushed the sound a little bit, 
it did gain a little bit of brilliance, but not like a king type brilliance where it gets very shimmery. It just, it just came to life a little bit more. It had a ring to it, but still remained and keeping a lot of that core to the sound. One of the interesting side notes, as I was going through and just experiencing with it, what I started hearing in the sound was almost more of a, almost like a really great large bore tenor orchestral kind of sound, meaning that when I pushed it a little bit, it got you know some of that, that, that beautiful resonance and clarity and control at the dynamic. Um, you know, to the point where as I was going through my, one of the thoughts I had was, boy, this could be a really great small bore tenor for somebody looking for a small bore tenor, for example, orchestral setting. So if you're playing, you know, some of that, that late classical, early romantic literature where you're playing with a sized down section, there are sound qualities with this, I, I think could just sit beautifully within that. Or frankly, I mean, if you're doing a lot of, you know, trombone choir type of playing and you're looking for a little bit lighter sound, but still maintaining some of that, that classical energy, that, that weight to the response, I felt like this did that really, really well. But on the flip side, I, I had a very, very easy time, you know, taking it and changing the timbre a little bit and making it work in more of this jazz focused setting as well. I think a lot of these characteristics could also put it in really good stead in, for example, you know, rock or salsa settings. If you were looking for a sound where again, you want to have a lot of projection, you want to have a little bit bigger sound, um, but you're maybe not interested in playing on a bigger horn. For example, in salsa settings, we see some players using medium bore, even large bore tenors to get that with the sound, that energy without getting really, really bright and edgy. I feel like there's some of that characteristic to this as well. That is really, really interesting. And again, of course, it has all of the green hoe time and care put into it. It's you know, it's such a beautifully built instrument. You can just feel it. As soon as you pick it up, there is something to this instrument. And I'm really excited we had a chance to put hands on it. So if you have any thoughts, questions about what you heard in the video, maybe you've been lucky enough to try this instrument, or maybe you want to compare it against some of the other really great vintage cons or other instruments, please leave some comments in the comment section. We'd love to have you as a part of our community here on the channel. Um, of course, when you're here, if you haven't already, Think about giving this video a thumbs up. Think about checking out some of our other videos, subscribing to the channel so you can see when we're putting new content out that is hopefully interesting, relevant to you. And of course, you can find The Trombone Shop on Facebook and Instagram as well. So on behalf of Schmidt Music Trombone Shop, I'm Keith Hilson. Thank you for watching.